I've been in Trafalgar Square at meetings like this many times, nearly 50 years ago at the time of the Suez War. In 1964, when Nelson Mandela was imprisoned as a terrorist at the time of the Rivonia trial against the Gulf War in support of the miners. And this is a place where movements are born and we today are building a world peace movement. Muslims um, around the world have been categorized as terrorists and we're not terrorists. Islam means peace. What are they fighting for? Privatization. The world's resources, the world's industry must be taken over for the sake of uh, of a, a very little minority of rich people, that's all it is. Why are they privatizing the world? That is the one thing they got in mind, privatize, privatize, privatize. And it really seems that there's a group in Washington who want to start a third world war. And it's desperately needed that people get out and say no, no to war in Afghanistan, but even more importantly, no to this great proliferation, which already they're talking about in the United States. This could be the biggest challenge that our generation will ever face, trying to prevent a third world war from happening. Yeah, because look what happened after the, um, after the 11th of September. American and British corporations got a blank check to fire all their surplus employees, and um, the shares of uh, British Aerospace and Raytheon and all these other military industrial companies went up, everybody else's shares went down. Gallup early on had a poll that something like 82% of people were opposed to military action. Uh, Gallup also had an international poll that showed that only two countries in the world were for it, and that was Israel and the United States. For 12 years, British and American planes have been dropping bombs on Iraq every week. Sure. More bombs have been dropped on Iraq now than were dropped on Vietnam throughout the whole Vietnam War. Shame on them! So even while they are bombing Afghanistan, they are bombing Iraq. Shame. Iraqi children are dying. And so I tell you something, friends. We need to keep our anti-war movement alive for a long time to come. And you see, once you start saying violence is the answer to your problems, you're in a way justifying what was done in September. If, uh, if retribution is the way of dealing with injustice, then we are back in the jungle. I believe that West's principles, are, some of its principles are very dear, not only to Muslims, but other people as well. One of the principles that it has is that people, you are innocent until you are proven guilty. And this is something that needs, is a fundamental part of the British society that we live in and something that we should hold on to. In the name of civilization, we seem to be rapidly backsliding into a sort of medieval justice system whereby you imprison people without trial, you curtail the very pillars of civilization, human rights. It's become clear now that the United States and Britain are uh, attacking countries that are not necessarily anything to do with terrorism, but it's more to do with um, oil and resources and a sort of power struggle that's going on rather than actually anybody who's carried out any terrorist actions. The ousting of the Taliban has put into power, well, it's been the old imperial game, hasn't it? It's been the ousting of ones of, of the bad terrorists for the good terrorists. Well, the media does not give us a balanced account. It is engaged in demonizing the Muslims all over the world, and the Muslim population here feel this very strongly. It whips up a hysteria about the war, which makes it very hard for people to hear different arguments. Television has uh, uh, played the role which it now increasingly plays in wars as a propaganda arm of the war machine. That's its role and that's the role it plays. And in the United States, I was in the United States, uh, I just came back yesterday, television is unbearable, completely unbearable, a total propaganda arm. The same images, the same reports, very tiny coverage in the American media of uh, the damage actually being inflicted on Afghanistan, possibly 20 seconds of the bomb Red Cross Center and then they move on to all the triumphs. So that's what's known as propaganda. That's not objective reporting.